Always Show. And we have a very special guest in the studio. She comes all the way from London. She's giving us that UK vibe, like this Nigerian weather cannot even touch her. I'm talking about Madam Joy. What's goody? What's goody? Hi, Joyce. How are you doing? I'm amazing. How are you? We are doing well. I'm doing well. Okay. Maya, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Are you sure? Yeah, can't complain. She's been a bit down recently. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm up now. You're here. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So it's great to meet you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Not a problem. So, you know, a lot of people know who you are. You are a huge talent in the UK and here. Uh, you have a fantastic podcast. You are a host. What what, other, what else would you call yourself? Oh, God. Um, I would like to say I'm a, I'm a presenter. I'm a mm-hmm. podcast host. I'm a personality um, wherever there's a mic and I get to speak, hmm. um, I'm, I'm doing something. So I'm, I'm just all around. I'm just me. Like, and wherever the, the money resides, right? Period. That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> That's what's up. That's fantastic. So your podcast, um, Cocktails and Takeaways, when did you start it? I started Cocktails and Takeaways three years ago, just as the pandemic started to slow down. Ah. And um, I just love talking to people. I love conversations. I love these intimate chats. And it was just just a passion project I just wanted to do it for fun and um, I remember I had no money um, I used my universal credit to pay for the first um, <laughs> episode right. and then from there it just kind of took off and and now we're here and I'm so grateful but yeah that's how it started three years ago mm-hmm. it was a passion project I wanted to do something fun and here we are interesting so did you ever um, always have like interest in media and entertainment or like what did you study in uni Ha, I tried to do acting. Oh my God. <laughs> I did acting in college. So when I was in, when I did my A-levels, I thought I was going to be a lawyer because you know okay. your parents, they always say, ah, yeah. well, your daughter is going to be a lawyer. And um, I was like, okay, like if that's what God wants me to do. And then I remember I did my first uh, lesson in law and I said, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> This can't be my destiny. Um, So then I changed subjects to do acting and I just love the creative field. I just love creating. I love... I love the power that we have as humans for something to start in your head Mm -hmm. and be able to allow it to come into reality. That's my favorite thing. So just to be able to act and create and do things, I've always loved it. But I couldn't, I couldn't take the rejection of acting. Acting is hard, though. It's a hard game. Oh, my was an actor. I know, I'm an actor. We are going through it. Oh, it's a lot. The rejection left, right, and center. It's like, you know, thank you for coming. You know, better luck next time. It's all that How many callbacks have you been to? I've been to a lot. (laughs) Don't even get me started. From the Netflixes to the Amazon Primes. But yeah, Um, let's circle back to cocktails and takeaways for a a minute. Um, You started that now. It's one of, you know, the best and, you know, the most watched YouTube um, podcasts um, right now. How do you exactly come up with your guest list? And is there, you know, a particular guest that, you know, you've invited that, you know, turned you down um, in the past? Do you know what? Yeah, honestly, like, it's so funny because people ask me this. They're just like, ah, how can I be on your show? I haven't got the numbers. And it's like, honestly... It's not about the numbers, it's about the vibe. The show is built on having a good time, escapism, enjoyment. So, yeah, I've turned down some people who are big. They've got names. They're like, I'm this person. I'm chatting, yeah. I'm blowing, yeah. And I'm like, babe, I love this song, but my goodness, you're boring, isn't it? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so, like, it's her stand up, boy. Let me, let me love my job. I love my job. And mm-hmm. to sit down for two hours to someone that's like, yeah, so obviously, like, Trust I've just me, been, know. I've just Yeah, but that's our job. Like, we can't really, like, turn them down. Give you know me what I mean? Okay, we can't we turn can't. them down. I've yeah. had some stale interviews. I'm like, so how's your day? And I'm fine. Yeah, man. So how do you tell them that you're like, no, I'm not doing the interview? You know what? Some I, I, I never say never. Like, I feel like sometimes people evolve and especially like in this new age where new talent is being churned every day. Some people might have social anxiety that they're still dealing with. Mm-hmm. So it's like girl you're not ready for this one yet because if you come on the show you're gonna bring some energy but maybe next time and um i kind of love that unfortunately there's so many people i want to talk to but we film once a week we only have 365 days Mm -hmm. in a year 54 weeks if the mathematics is right that means i got 54 guests in a year that i can squeeze in and i want to talk to so many people Mm -hmm. um 
But um, yeah, there has been some painful people, man. I'll be honest. That I'm just like, please, <laughs> like, I love you. I love what you do, but this is not the right show for you. Yeah. So, how did you decide that you wanted to even dive into the podcast world? Because here in Nigeria, we have podcasts coming out of every oh my corner. <laughs> Honestly, people are starting to say we need to like ban microphones. <laughs> the rate at which people have podcasts in this country. <laughs> yeah. So, like, how did you decide you wanted to even like get into that world? And how did you like carve out your own space? You know what? I knew I love to talk to people, mm-hmm. but it's so funny because I, I wanted to do YouTube, but I said that I didn't have the face for YouTube. Really? I felt like my face was too hard. And where I come from, the girls there were, oh my God, hi, my name is Sandra. And I come from <laughs> now. And, like, uh. and I'm like, that's not me. I'm I'm very much a Nigerian woman. Everything is gra gra. So I just <laughs> thought, I don't feel like I have the dainty face for YouTube. And I was like, do you know what? I'm going to do a podcast because I love to speak, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I'm girly enough to be on YouTube. Mm, and so to get ready with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ugh, that's not my steez. Like, why are you watching me? To be honest, I have done the get ready with me. Let me you. I've, done, I've done my best but um yeah i just decided that i wanted to go the podcast route again it's all about conversation it's all about people it's all about communication and that's what i'm about mm. now online hate is a real thing um <laughs> so like i want to find out how you manage like you know getting all this criticism because like i know the, with um, podcast there's like a lot of clickbait sometimes mm-hmm. and sometimes the clips you see might you know strike some negative reactions in some people and i also want to find out like the different markets the audiences here in lagos and the audience in the uk are they different the kind of people you you touch do you know what yeah honestly the internet is a very is a very tough place it's a very tough yeah. marketplace and i'm relatively new to the nigerian space and uh, guys we all need to calm down there. <laughs> like, the Nigerian social media platforms, the community there, they are very, very, they can be very tough. And I think yeah. what what is different is sometimes the way I joke and the way I play, it it lands as a London girl. Yeah. But as a Nigerian girl, they're not getting it. They don't. So sometimes I'll say something and I'll say it very lightheartedly. I remember I was talking about how um, women women would be better at going to war because we can carry rice on our back. We can, <laughs> we can, we can pound by the diam. That is the hand I use for, for a weapon. Like we were just joking. Mm-hmm. And the Nigerian community took it so literal. And I said, like, it's a joke. What, girl, laugh, <laughs> laugh. It's supposed to be funny, uh, but they didn't get it. So sometimes I've, I've realized that there's some miscommunication and, in some of the jokes I make but again that just comes down to a cultural thing but the UK people is the same you know there's there's similar things that I say and um it's been misconstrued but then sometimes to answer your question about dealing with criticism um you just have to take that a lot of times people will reflect their personal experiences onto you Mm -hmm. and that's not your problem Mm -hmm. you know you have to really like not take it so personally because you don't know what this person is going through you don't know what what's happening in their lives you don't know if they're sleeping on concrete so right. when you when you <laughs> when you say it like that it's like i can't take what you say personal but as long as what when you as talent mm-hmm. know that what you're saying is good from your heart mm-hmm. and you've got a good heart th- that's all i can do you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. so that's can me. I ask this question because you Talk know to me. obviously you know you've already you have you have blown in a way you know with, you know, with your, with your <laughs> podcast um, but there was something that was going viral, I think last year or earlier this year, about, you know, a UK content creator that was talking about, you know, oh, yeah. how um, Nigerian content creators have it easier to make it um, compared to, you know, over there in the UK. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that? So the person is us is saying that Nigerian content creators have more they have means it to, easier. They, they have, have it easier. easier mm-hmm. it, so yeah. basically, she was saying how you can be a content creator here in Nigeria, and then the next thing you're on a Netflix series here in Nigeria. But if you do, if you're a content creator in the UK, you still have to go to like acting school. You have to mm-hmm. get like talent and agents and all the situations. So do you think that's the case? Do you know what I'm gonna say? I think I I can see where this person is coming from because the love here is crazy. Mm-hmm. I think when when Nigerian people really love someone. They will. They love them hard. They'll carry them on their back. They want to see them win. Their their win is their own personal win. Mm. I think when it comes to the UK, people, especially when you're a content creator and you haven't quite hit that, you're in that gray area of I'm a content creator, but I'm not quite yet a celeb. Like mm. I'm not a Maya Jama. When yeah. you're in that weird, when you're in that weird space, it's like we like you, but 
it's never loud mm. and it's never like mm. it's it's never like it's never like we love you and we're fans of you it's like oh i like you but you're also that girl that i went to school with back mm. in the day yeah like, they try to they try to mm. make it a little bit like you're, you're not like, that big you're, yeah we like you but yeah. cool down yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? we like you but cool down yeah. But even in, even in the states, like um, like states in Nigeria are quite similar in how they and how their audiences and their fans love their content creators. Same same thing you're talking about Nigerian content creators doing Netflix. You got creators in the states on on the cover of magazines. Like mm-hmm. it's diff, it's a different ball game in those places because yeah. there's a lot more respect for the people who are creating content. Mm. And I so I'm I'm gonna agree I'm gonna agree with her on that. Can I just say something? Because you you know you mentioned something about you know how in in the UK sometimes they might know that you know you're popping off but they don't want to let you know that you're popping off that, that much you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying it's like oh you're still the same girl I went to school with I do want to say that in Nigeria it's almost the same it's kind right? of the same, really? kind of the same. yeah it is it is like cause you know you could be like you know blowing small small right now they will not let you know they will still be trying to make it seem like oh you're still on their level yeah, yeah. yeah like That's proud it. scream yeah 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 Science. but if you don't go for a big brother if you go for a big brother Nigeria now <sighs> For instance, and then obviously it's not just your friends that are seeing you. It's not like the entire you know country that's seeing you. So they don't have a choice but to jump on the bandwagon to like you know be a fan or to like support you. That's when the support now comes. So I do get where you're where you're coming from in terms of like oh yes Nigerians they do love hard, but in terms of having it easier, I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. Mm-hmm. And here is why I'm saying that. So now for instance, if Nigerians when Nigerians go to the UK. Mm-hmm. We've seen it countless times where it's like, a Nigerian enters the UK today. They're already telling us, oh, let me tell you how, you know, to survive in the UK. Like, bro, you've been there two minutes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and we have a lot of them that make videos like that. And when they start making videos like that, you see their subscribers start to increase. You see that, you know, their views start to like um, increase as well. And the monetization, I, I guess, is, I don't know how it works exactly because I'm not mm-hmm. a YouTuber, but I know that they make money from that. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, you don't have a lot of people that are actual YouTubers and content creators that are making money like that. Mm-hmm. And usually those people that are actually at the top of their game in terms of YouTube and content creation and stuff like that. They've had to work for a longer time. They've had to, you know, build that community for a longer time compared to, like, I I guess in the UK. Mm -hmm. Because this is just, like, things I've seen. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, what I would say is you're absolutely right in terms of the monetization because, unfortunately, the CPMs are really bad here. So for anyone that doesn't know what CPMs are, it's like every, for every 1,000 listeners, viewers, mm. you get a certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's not great here. But what yes. you guys do have, which is phenomenal, and you will never see like, like anything in the UK, is the numbers. And you guys have, like, if you are prominent in Nigeria, your engagement, your community is 10 times, 20 times bigger than if you're more established in the UK. So yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you yeah. because there are pros and cons to both. Yeah. But honestly, I will say that in terms of the love and the capacity of the love is crazy. Go on your favorite content creator's Instagram right now yeah. and see the numbers compared to your favorite on on, on in the UK. Mm-hmm. They are very two different ball games. Mm-hmm. People are here to love and ride for their creators. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would say. But the money do better. The CPM, yeah. 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 yeah, the money. It's, it's different help. it's different help so I'm glad that Mayo actually brought up um, Big Brother because Big Brother in these parts of the world is crazy yes, yes now yes. I grew up on UK Big Brother I grew up in the UK same and I know you recently interviewed Davina McCall I she did. is one of my favorite hosts yes, ever sir. because she's just fantastic so you in your own right you are a huge name already because I, I was I was going through your page you were at the Brits yeah. you were nominated for a mobile one you so yeah. you are you're getting your accolades no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so do you still do you get a starstruck and um, meeting any of these um quote-unquote whiteies celebrities <laughs> don't let me wait what I don't know how else to a say white, it. A white, a white, a white, a white. <laughs> Our Caucasian celebrity. I, I, I love Davina McCall. I think she's fabulous. And I think not not just because of her colour, but also because of the history she has to, to UK media and entertainment. She's mm-hmm. been in the game 20 years strong. Like she's, she's nobody's mates. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm so honoured that somebody like me, who's a newbie in the presenting and interviewer space, can interview OGs like that. Mm-hmm. It's an absolute honour. Do I get starstruck? Honestly, um, no. And I'll tell you why. Because I feel like I'm still in a bubble where I don't feel like anything is reality. Nah. <laughs> I don't feel like my life is real. I'll be honest. And I don't think I, I really take in 
the experiences that happen to me because my life just moves so quickly. Yeah. One minute I'm here, the next I'm back in London, the next I'm in the things move so fast for me. Mm. So unfortunately, I don't have time to breathe and just process, which is something I'm working on this year. I really just want to just be present and be like, God is so good. But unfortunately, I have I don't have time to take things in because when yeah. I'm interviewing Davina McCall, I'm not thinking, oh my God, this is Davina McCall. It's like, what's my question? Yeah. What have I got to say? Let me not forget that in uh, 2000 or something, she did something. <laughs> something. I'm, trying to re- I'm trying to be a good right. interviewer rather than remembering that I'm actually finally here. So unfortunately, that's something I'm working on there. Yeah. God help me. Uh-huh. Help me. <laughs> so this is your second time in Lagos. Yeah. For being, um, what's it like? And are you dating right now? Oh, I love Lagos. Mm-hmm. Guys, can I say with my heart, my whole heart and yeah. chest? Hmm. You love Lagos because you can leave. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> sorry, unpopular Hold opinion. Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on that's, now. You see, that's that's the difference. That's the difference. That's for true. A couple weeks. Because <laughs> when I out. didn't live here, I loved it so oh, much. So I moved here. <laughs> <laughs> now we're here. You you <laughs> I wouldn't call it a mistake. I just think I need to <laughs> redirect my life. <laughs> You're probably right, honestly, because it is. I love, I love the chaos that is Lagos. Yes, I love it. I love coming because you know I come from London where everything is organized. Stand this place, move mm-hmm. this place, jump this place, roll this way. Politician here, uh, government here. Here it's like everybody vibe, You're mad. vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe, vibe. Like and with enough vibe. money, you can rule the world. Honestly, and I'm so it's 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 so good. Could I live here? Probably not, just because I come from somewhere that's so law and order. Mm-hmm. But I do love the escapism. I love the community here. Let me tell you what I love the most about um, Lagos, and I'm going to say Lagos because one time I said Nigeria, it's like they don't do that in America. I said okay, okay, sorry, I'm going to talk Lagos. I love the community here. I love. There's a thing where I noticed that people can just like pull up to their friend's house and stuff. Yeah. Like you can just go to your friend's house and just kick back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't do like London, Louis. What do you mean I'm outside your house? For? <laughs> for what? <laughs> when I've just finished doing the eight, nine hour shift, what you come to my house for? I, yeah. I love the friendship and the community that you guys have here. And I realized that like there's some people that have friendship groups of like four or five or six. Oh, like, primary school. Yes, yeah, it's mm-hmm. primary school. Yeah. I love it. So when it's like, yeah, I'm just coming, I'm just downstairs. I just ah come up. Oh. <laughs> because I don't get like honestly, like they you read that they said that uh uh UK or London is the most miserable second miserable place yeah. in the world. Oh, it's God. it's true because most of us were so alone. That we're so focused oh, on, yeah. on work winning focus 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 that that element of community and partnership and even friendships we don't have it unfortunately so yeah let me come to the house <laughs> you come to my house come and kick back and i'll come to your house and kick back i love it it's so cool how have you found dating uk men and nigerian men is there a difference do you prefer oh, God, one or the you know other do you, i know why you asked me this because the last time they asked me this i got flogged for like you for like did? two weeks oh stop it <laughs> they stop it ah oh, they beat my ass who said that they beat me <laughs> Be very careful what you say. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. They beat me. They beat me. Um, what would I say? Okay, I have I have an opportunity to uh, to re- give us a buzz. We correct answer. Don't give me the PR. I don't really stuff. like Nigerian men. You don't like Nigerian you don't like men. Nigerian men. No, I don't. I I love them unfortunately because I can't get enough of them. But I don't really like them. No. Do you get the answer? You can no, love joy. something Please and not like answer. it. <laughs> Honestly, I love UK men. Keep it. So yeah, leave that in the edit. Leave that in the edit. She's like, she took a break after she said that. So that the clip will not yeah, break. I when you take it yeah. out. Hey, don't, don't, don't sound. Don't clip me. Don't clip me. Don't clip. I know what you lot are doing in these streets. But yeah, I, I love, I love UK men. Um, I, but I have experienced Nigerian men recently, and I just feel like the level of chivalry they have, and the level of romance and attention is from my experience a lot more now i agree if you came there's uk men out here that say yeah but i do that it's like then yeah call me in it like, mm-hmm. because <laughs> from my experiences if i'm comparing the two nigerian men have definitely shown me a lot more love and attention and um they've been a lot more chivalrous and a lot more gentlemen and i find their aura and demeanor and their masculine and is so attractive oh my god oh Ugh. my god i feel like you're having I was, flashbacks <laughs> yes, I was, can I tell you why though? Can I tell you why? Talk and I feel me. like I'm about to like drop some uh, talk to me. Yeah, I don't know if I said but let me tell you why it's like that, right? It's cause 
you're here, you're a guest, you're here for like a couple couple days, couple yeah. weeks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they just want to show you a good time for the time that you are here. No, don't say that. They don't want to fall in love with you, be. Nicole. You that's not saying that you've been here how many years? <laughs> <laughs> you you, 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 you wrong for that. You what? wrong for that. No, you wrong for that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The experience <laughs> that she's talking about. Is it? Is it? I think it's like anywhere. Does, that experience doesn't last long. I'll just give you now. If exactly. Stay here for six months. Stay here for six months. But her husband, her husband could be this in in this climate. So let's just, you know, Do love you know, that. I, I I generally believe that that I am marrying the Nigerian man. Yeah, and it's and so you Nigerian are right. Man. You are right in terms of people treat different people differently based on where they come from because it's the same in in the UK. Yeah. An America girl comes and they're all and they're all over. I remember Jada Wade came. Yes, Jada Wade came and someone bought her Chanel bag. I saw a tweet and yes. they were like, "We." You they, bought her, mm-hmm. they bought her Chanel bag and somebody tweeted, they said, yeah, um, see what UK men are doing. Nobody's going to buy a bag for Madame Joyce. I said, what did I do? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you in it? What's what that you, to do what with me? me? What, what did she say me for? <laughs> From nowhere. Just From nowhere, just, just, just strays. I'll just mind my business. I said, okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. But yeah, th- I mean, that's what it is. But Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, a London girl in Las Guinea, so uh, I'm having a good time. Um, but let's just um, bring it back to, um, to podcasting because I'm sure there's a lot of people listening right now that um, you know want to dive into that world and mm. create their own show, maybe even model it after you and your career. So, what would you say are some like maybe the the pros you've had and the challenges, um, you know, starting and maintaining a podcast for three years onwards? Okay, sick. Pros. Um, the pro is I get to I get to wake up and be myself every morning and and make a living from it and mm. talk to some cool people which is amazing um pros is vulnerable conversations i love the fact that we have very candid and honest um chats about anything and and everything nothing is on nothing is off the table so that would be a pro and i just i just really really again love my team I love where we started. So even before I had a team, it's, it's it's easy for people who are starting content creation. Like you said, it's easy to buy. It's it, it was, uh, podcast equipment is easy, <laughs> it's easy to find. Yeah. But that means it's easy to start. And for people that don't have the resources like me, you can pick up a mic, you can pick up a camera. And if you're passionate about content creating, you can do it without having the, the overhead of studio, this, that. You can start it in your room, you can start it in your house. So that those are the pros the pros of it the cons of it is for me is that i feel like being a woman being in this space it has been very difficult because when you are a woman who um is vulnerable and who shares and who um is a bit you know who who doesn't mind being open with their lives unfortunately that that means that you're open to a lot of criticism as much as you're open to love you're also open to to criticism Mm -hmm. so just be prepared for that Another con is, um, I would probably say that is the, that is the main con. It's just that imagine being yourself. The pro is being yourself, but mm-hmm. the con is also being yourself because the pro is you get to openly and unapologetically be who you want. People love you, but then you also can be open and unapologetic and people can hate you. Yeah. And those <laughs> yeah. two polar opposites for me have been such a mind buzz Mm -hmm. you know um because no matter how try how hard you try for somebody to like you or to be the best or to say the right things people will just end up having something negative to say so you really just can be so discouraging it can be imagine giving your true authentic self and they're like oh yeah i hear you (laughs) i hate you it's the most it's the most it was the most painful part of the journey Mm -hmm. because i'm not hiding you know you're not an actor where you know when you when you can't stand a villain Mm-hmm. you can't take it personally because it's like i'm playing a character mm-hmm. this is me baby i'm playing me i'm me yeah. so i couldn't fathom that i'm my true self and people didn't le- receive me it was very strange but then again back to what we're saying about criticism you just can't take it personally and you always have to focus on where you're loved mm-hmm. you know i have an amazing community here i have an amazing community um in london and, and other parts of the world that ride for the show that watch it every week so when somebody in the comments is like, oh, shut up, you fatty, you just have to focus. <laughs> you just have to focus on the people that love you and support you yeah. every week. Yeah. 
Aw, that's fantastic. So before we wrap up, um, one of my last questions is, um, I know you have a somewhat famous sibling. Yeah. And honestly, I'm going to say hand on my heart, I didn't know Grace was your sister until very <laughs> recently. I've been watching Grace a long time ago yeah. when she used to make skits and just be hilarious all over social media. So I want to find out, like, how come it wasn't, like, one of the things you used to, like, lead with the fact that you have a sister in, like, a similar industry? Honestly, I think I've suffered so much in life. I didn't believe in nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in it. I said, listen, struggle to the end. No, do you know what? I love, I love Grace. Um, she is, I would say, one of the, the founders, one of the beginning of the content we see today in terms mm-hmm. of women and personality. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be outright and say it. Um, she was the first to ever come out and just not be pretty, but be a personality and especially bring in the 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 Nigerian uh flavor and diaspora into into mainstream media before the girls were pretending that they were English. Oh hello, yeah. can you come into who will you can you come and come to do my makeup? It's like <laughs> girl, that's not how you talk. And mm-hmm. she came and she came with a new flavor and, and she was who she was and she she came in a in a in a European place as a Nigerian woman and, and excelled. So I love her for that. But the reason why I didn't uh I didn't say is because I didn't want to be Grace Adjelora's sister. I mm-hmm. wanted to be Madam Joyce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I felt that if I'm going to come into this space and it's going to work, I need for it to work because of me. Yeah. Not because of who I know or who's my sibling. So I kept it under wraps. I didn't say Pim because I said I need to know for my own self-esteem and for my own um, worth ethic because I work very hard yeah. and I would hate for someone to come and try and take that away from me and be like the reason why you were where you were is because of your sister because yeah. that one I can I can turn it to sand <laughs> in the corner so yeah. and, I, and then you know that if it doesn't work it's not supposed to be for me there's some people that they are working because their sister and mommy and auntie have put them in place and it's like girl but on a big man thing you're not that good yeah. like right. so I wanted to I wanted to make sure that I was in the right place for the right reasons, and and now that I am, it. now that I am, we're, yeah, we're we're good, and it's all it's all love. So yeah, no, I can actually totally relate to that because same, same. same, <laughs> same. I, have, same. You know, I just don't want to be known as Dan St. Joseph's brother. Oh shut up! And Dan's gift man, calm down. I can see the resemblance. Thank you very much for seeing it. I can see the resemblance. No, I was really thinking, like, who's your who's your sibling? Say no, say no, but, you know. Shout um, out my wife, Grace. Yeah. Come on now. Um, anyway, <laughs> Madam Joyce, you have definitely made you a name for yourself. That is fantastic. How long are you staying in Lagos for? Honestly, I'm actually leaving tomorrow. Oh. This is my last day. Um, it's been fantastic. The weather's been amazing. I'm sad to go back to cold, cold London, but it's been an experience and I've met some cool people. And and again, thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. This has been. And I know you brought your podcast to Lagos last time. Is it going to come back? Yeah. Do you know what? No. Funny enough, I actually promised myself that I wasn't going to work this holiday. I just yeah. wanted to meet people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I did. Obviously, I really wanted to come here. So I've made the exception for you guys because I love Aww. you so much. Okay. Aww, you, <laughs> you, can, like, you can have that compliment, but bring chocolate. That's <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I really wanted to come and see you guys. But um, yeah, just networking and holiday and enjoying it. Enjoying Lagos for for what it is. And that's it. Fantastic. And just tell the people, where can they find your podcast and like, when does it air? Alrighty. So we are um, Cocktails and Takeaways. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Um, Our page on Instagram is Cocktails and Takeaways. And on Twitter, and my personal page is Madam Joyce on all platforms. If you want to, if you want to chat to me in their life, you don't want to say they have nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Joyce. This has been a fantastic conversation. Great to meet you. And next time you come to Lagos, uh, drinks on my way. Yeah, come on, <laughs> my way. <wife, laughs> <drinks. laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this. And also, don't forget to check out all the other content on the other shows on the Beat 99.9 FM.